What's up, suckers? Uh, today we have visitors, so you're gonna hear a lot of background noise. But um, we're gonna go over the issues that you're gonna find with your succulents, growing succulents, reproducing succulents, having them basically natural uh, as any plant would. You're gonna have a lot of death, you're gonna have a lot of life, and everything in the middle will either go perfectly right or terribly wrong. And so these are the things that you're gonna wanna look out for in succulents. Let's go. All right, step number one, sunburn. Um, I find that the more common thing that people will do is they'll water their succulents and then they'll put them directly in the sun and kind of let them be. I like to water the soil directly, unless specifically the succulent's too big for that. Then I'll water on top of the succulent and then I will move it directly out of sunlight. That way over time, the sun will still evaporate the water, but it won't directly affect the succulents. And so oftentimes, first thing you'll see is crumpled up leaves. I've got a couple of them. Uh, definitely the smaller ones in the back. They seem to be weaker. Um, second one that you look out for is the black spots. So this just had water sitting and because there wasn't a whole lot of places for it to go, the sun captured it perfectly. Um, I'm just trying to see. Yeah, I've got a tiny spider in there. Cute. Um, and so oftentimes you'll end up in the end with stuff like this. It's just basically ash at this point because it's been so fried and deeply sunburned. So that's generally a problem. Um, second is complete underwatering. Uh, so oftentimes I'll have succulents like where I am currently on my top balcony that I'll think, oh, I'll remember it this one time or it's supposed to rain or, you know, where it directly is at this moment. I'm going to have a lot of moisture because, again, I live up in Northern California, way out by the bay. So I'm thinking to myself, yeah, it's perfect. Like, all that moisture is going to come in. And then it doesn't. And what you end up with is just very badly and very sad shriveled up flowers. Um, because the flowers are supposed to show you the health of your plant. And if you get flowers every year, then, you know, they put off these beautiful blooms. But if you don't water them appropriately, uh, then your flowers just kind of bloom and shrivel up very quickly. So for this one, I definitely need to water her more and especially where she is um, more consistently. Um, third thing I notice is too little sunlight or direct sunlight. Um, so at this point in time, I have a couple succulents, baby succulents in my window and previous videos, I have had babies inside to keep them safe. Simply put, uh, again, because I live by the bay and oftentimes I'll have that cold water front come in and, you know, even though I've got this great humidity level balance to, you know, immediate sunlight, intermediate, not sunlight. Um, generally speaking overnight, you know, you can still have that cold front coming in from the ocean. And so I'm thinking to myself, perfect, they're inside, they're safe. But then you get instances like this where they etoliate and basically they're trying to reach for sun and because of lack of sun or direct sunlight, um, this will continue to try to reach until it gets it. But the problem with these spiderweb succulents, spiderweb succulents, is that if you put it in absolute direct sun, sunlight, they will shrivel up and die. Um, and so oftentimes you'll just have those succulents that want to reach forever. And this doesn't kill the succulent, but simply put, it stresses out the succulent. So if it overreaches, if it overstretches, or if you continue to let it go this direction in its course of life, it will just kind of continue that until it does shrivel up and die. Alrighty, step number four, or problem number four that I often run into is white mold. 
Um, so you can kind of, you can barely make it out on the camera. Um, but generally what happens is that water will get trapped on these succulents. And depending on what kind of succulent you have, um, oftentimes it will kind of create a tacky substrate on the top, which is also why it's very difficult to like put soil around um, <laughs> the succulents. So you end up with these issues. And so the tacky substrate on the succulent leaf itself, which again is hard to fix, I suppose, because it's naturally that way. And so oftentimes when you have these succulents, you don't want to consistently like finagle with or touch the leaves, you know, touching everything, rubbing everything with your fingers. As soon as you plant it, you want to leave it alone. Um, if water gets trapped on that and you don't realize and you try to shake it off or even like, a, you know, a paper towel at that point, just sop up what's left. Um, it'll create white mold and then this could reach your roots and absolutely kill your plant. Um, the, what is that, four? So the fifth one that we're going to talk about is uprooting. When your succulent decides that the soil or your pot is too small and it grows too big. Uh, and this is just a point of shock. So you can just see that the leaves are slightly shriveled up, but it's still green. It's still good. And so basically what you want to do is, if you can, find something that's very similar. And I'm doing this without gloves, guys. Don't do that. And put it in that pot because whatever um, substrate those succulents are in. Here, I'll use this knife. Whatever substrate those, those specific succulents are in, if they're successfully already growing, that means that the nutrients are really successful as well. So just put it in there for the time being until you can get a new pot and then use half the substrate that you put the new plant into just for the area that it's in. So if it's a small plant, you'll literally add like a third of a cup of the soil that it's currently growing in and you'll put it in a new pot with new soil. You'll kind of incorporate that until you have brand new soil and then eventually you'll end up like me. Um, and then the sixth thing before the worst thing um, that can happen to your succulents is simply overwatering. Now, I don't personally have a succulent that I have overwatered, but the number one thing that starts to happen is that it, at this point, will frame it, goes into shock, and so it'll kind of freeze in growing. And you'll think to yourself, oh, that's weird. Well, I should water it more. And what basically the succulent is telling you is that no, 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 no more watering. Otherwise you end up with a mushy succulent. And then when you try to fix it, it's too late because the inside, the entire inside of the stalk has rotted. So even if you add more soil or if you try to add, you know, you can't take out water from a succulent because that's what it does. It seeps in water. Um, and so at that point, you're kind of done. You've lost it. Um, and I don't personally have any succulents like that, but I have tried to rescue succulents like that, and it is very disappointing when the end product is mushy. Um, I had purchased three spiderweb succulents that were floating in a pot, and I thought, okay, okay, easy fix. Just take it home, leave it to dry in the sun, fine. And within a week, it was absolutely, absolutely just like mush in the pot. And I thought to myself, was, was this a succulent that I bought? Did I just buy? And I picked it up and on the bottom side, it was like completely, it was really gross. Um, and at the point that I like picked up the leaves, the three center leaves kind of fell away and showed me what I didn't want to see. So no thanks. Um, and the seventh thing, actually there is one more before, um, is mites. So spider mites. Spider mites are difficult to point out because if you're like me and you enjoy spiders and your succulents, um, you have spider webs everywhere. And oftentimes if you're not careful and you don't know what you're looking for, you'll run into problems like that look like spider webs, but then you'll notice these little tiny, let's see if it'll focus on the plant instead of me, little tiny white things and this is a succulent that has had issues with mites in the past, so I'm not necessarily worried about, oh, there's mites on this plant. I'm a bad, you know, plant parent. This is one that has been separated from the parent plants simply because um, it had mites previously. So with this specific one, 
bugs. I'll put in two the full title bugs because you can also get boring worms and they also look like spider webs and with that you just end up having problems um let me double check this one looks like it also has boring worms so that's really exciting boring worms are little tiny microscopic worms that become little tiny white moths uh later on and where i am my area is chock full of them they're everywhere so they start out in your succulent and they eat your succulent and then as they get bigger they bore into your succulent because at night it gets cold and they think okay i need to find warmth and they go inside your succulent and that's it you have lost your succulent um and so oftentimes uh this is a really good example of it actually because it's completely bored itself inside and out so you can see the inside of the leaf and the outside of the leaf and you can see through the leaf and it's completely lost to me. But this succulent's trying to keep this specific leaf alive. And so, there you go. That's exactly what it looks like. I'm trying to get my face out of the, there we go, yeah. So it's completely translucent. It's been completely bored through. So, thanks man. I hate it. <laughs> And then that does bring us around full circle to the worst thing that can happen to your succulent, and that's something that happens naturally. And last but not least, we're going to discuss death blooms. Um, death blooms are basically when your succulent has reached its end of life and pushes out a flower directly in the middle. Now, oftentimes you'll have flowers that pop up. As you've seen in my previous videos, I've showed you flowers that pop up, but death blooms are specifically when flowers pop up in the very center, um, which is basically the elongation of the stem from the roots base to the face of the flower. Um, and so that generally speaking, you'll have succulents that look something where you've got your, your root base, cat, your root base, and then your elongated stalk to the face of your plant and then the flowers that are coming out of the directly of the center of it and then sometimes if you don't catch it several of them will push it off because it tells it okay the original flower is dying the original plant is dying and so the first thing I like to do is count how many I have that have officially pushed off flowers versus those that haven't so then I'll pull those off, or for this specific instance, I will cut them off because they're so thick. So these two are unaffected, including this baby. And then the second thing I'll do, oh, there's a third, pardon me. So that makes four. Um, and then the last thing I'll do with these specifically is pull off the smallest flowers or the smallest leaves and try to propagate them. Um, if you go any bigger, you'll have a little, a little bit of difficulty. It's not hard, hard, but it does create some complication when it comes to officially propagating and getting it to sprout. So I'll kind of get down here and I'll show you where to start. So oftentimes like this, this is just necrosis from being old. And this succulent has lived here for the past two years and this would be my second oldest succulent making it five as of now so almost almost six, six year which does make me a little sad but the easiest way to do this is to take off the bottom leaves this one can be propagated however it is a little light so i'll hold on to it anyways um, and you want to get as close to the base as possible here so I am going to hold on to those. I'm going to do as many as possible off of this one specifically. Um, even though I'm pulling apart a death bloom, this is a premature plant, so I should be catching it at just the right time to be able to propagate these. And these are the perfect size I like. Um, that way, A, they're small, and B, I can really, come on, pay attention to these guys. Um, that one did have a bug, but we're good. 
And basically I'm just gonna pull them all off well up to that flower. And I'm just gonna leave these flowers, even though this is technically a death bloom. The whole thing's dying. It's it's well come to its age and prime. So I'll let the flowers bloom. They might be cute. I am a little sad about this one dying, but I do have some babies that I was able to pull off. Let's see, is this one? Does this one? Yes, it does. It does have a death bloom on the other side. That's too bad. That's like most of the that's most of the plant. And this one, surprising, didn't come with any real issues when I first planted it. Um, the only thing I noticed when I first got it was that it seemed really small, but now that I've had it for some time and it seems absolutely massive, it's kind of surprising. And it loved the porch. The only problem I ever came up with was this guy right here, just a bug bite. I'm pretty sure I have a burrowing worm in there. If I were to go in and start pulling it apart, I would more than likely find a burrowing worm, but it didn't affect the rest of the plant, so I didn't bother it. And a little bit of sunburn from being watered and then left directly in the sun. But other than that, not too bad. And then as you can see, so here's my here's my nice grouping of that. And then as you saw, as my camera caught, this also put off a death bloom. But then it's also blooming in other directions and it has a couple babies. I will do the same with that one. I'll just clip off. There we go, put that in my bin. I'll clip off the two that are successful growths and then I will propagate some leaves from the rest of the plant. And so that ultimately concludes the video of problems that you'll experience growing succulents, things to look out for, and kind of ways to either fix it or to solve it or to go around. So hopefully that was informal enough. Um, but kind of a broad, vague grouping of, hey, this is what you should look out for. And so, yeah, definitely have a lot of plants and we have a lot of steps to go through. So, peace out, suckers.